happy Sabbath. Is everybody okay? Amen. Amen. Well, I just want to give God the glory and the praise because he knew exactly what he was doing. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, I realize and I recognize my inadequacy. Lord, I pray that you may take my feelings and my emotions captive. Lord, I pray that you may speak a word to me tonight. Lord, I'm not praying that somebody may be blessed, but each one of us tonight, we may know that you are God. In Jesus' name. I had the opportunity of traveling to Kenya. Uh, please bear with my accent. Uh, if you won't understand, it is my prayer that the Spirit may help you understand. I am just but a bushman on my way to the kingdom. So when I go to Kenya a uh, few weeks ago, uh, to attend my uncle's burial. And I was talking to my elder sister, and she said that the last words that my uncle uttered, he spoke them to her. And he said, do not worry about me. I have finished the race. I will see you in glory. In the year 1998, my cousin was sick, and I was sick also. We were both bedridden. And one of us, as it was believed, was not going to make it. My cousin on his deathbed, he stood up for the very first time and sat by his bed, took out his Bible, and began to give his last message. And what he said was, let none of you cry or weep for me. Because I have finished the race. But now the time has come that I have to go. After he had spoken and he prayed for each one of us. And then he lay back on his bed and gave his last breath. This reminds me of our Savior, Jesus Christ, upon the cross. And I have entitled this message, Behold Thy Son, Behold Thy Mother. I think the Spirit is leading me different. So if you would bear with me, I just want to write something here. I think the Spirit has said, our message will be, can God count on you? John chapter 19, verses 26 through 27, the Bible says, When Jesus, therefore, saw his mother and the disciples standing by, whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her into his own home. The relationship between John and Jesus was more intimate than that between Jesus and the other disciples. That this disciple would be called the beloved disciple. John could therefore carry the duties of a son more faithfully than the rest of the disciples. And that is why Jesus would entrust a man such as he with the care of his mother. Tonight, I want to invite you to come with me on a very profound journey. A journey that no one wants to talk about. A journey that nobody cares or even talk about anymore. A journey that no one wants anything to do with. A journey that will captivate your mind and draw your attention to the one who is able when you are unable. 
A journey that focuses your attention to the one who can do something when there is nothing you can absolutely do. A journey so important, yes, so deep and profound. A journey only spoken of and remembered once every year, and that is the journey of the cross. At the cross, we find the very last words of Jesus. At the cross is where we find our hope. At the cross is where we are recreated. At the cross is where our sins are nailed. At the cross is where Jesus spoke and he declared that it is finished. At the cross, Jesus looked at his beloved disciple and he said, Behold thy mother. Can God count on you? Can God trust you with his work? Can God trust you with his children? Can God trust you with his ministry? Can God count on you to do something? Can God count on you? The book Desire of Ages, page 742, paragraph 1. I'll read it. Uh, it, it sounds better, not from my iPad, iPad, but 742. It says... These are very profound words. As the eyes of Jesus wandered over the multitude about him, one figure arrested his attention. Jesus was dying on the cross. He was going through pain and agony. But he forgot about his pain and his agony. And, 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 and spirit of prophecy says that Jesus wandered over the multitude amidst his pain, amidst his suffering. He wandered over the multitude. And there's one figure that caught his attention. And that was his mother. Jesus wanders all through the earth. And says there is one figure that catches my attention. And that is my man servant, Karl Marx. Does Jesus get your attention? And, 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 and upon that cross as he was dying. Upon that cross when blood was oozing from his body. He looked at his mother. Cared for his mother. Forgot what he was going through. And only embraced his mother. And he said, behold your mother. It is very important what Jesus says. We need to care for our aging parents. We cannot neglect our parents. A neglect of our parents is sinning against the Lord God Almighty. We cannot neglect our parents. Many times we care for what we want to do, yet forgetting that there is somebody somewhere who is in need. Has somebody ever come to you and said, may I borrow some money because I want to pay a bill? And you came out and said, I too got bills to pay. Jesus stopped dying long enough in order to remember that he has a mother somewhere. We ought to remember that there is somebody somewhere who is in need more than we are in need. Because if Jesus brings somebody to you, he is able to take care of you. Amen. Jesus wandered over the multitude and one figure arrested him. Are you that figure that arrests Jesus upon that cross? Jesus says, behold thy mother. When Jesus said this to his beloved disciple John, all he was saying, this is your mother, take care of her. If you have the privilege of coming to, from Africa like I do, you'll understand that if I was to take a mother and say, this is my mother, and I take her over to Africa and I tell my community that this is my mother, she will be embraced as the community mother. That is how we ought to treat and respect one another with God's loving kindness. But I want us to look at these words. Mother, John is your son. Please take care of him. I want us to look at these words. Woman, behold thy son from a different perspective. This perspective is going to challenge your thinking and your view of life. What Jesus was saying of his mother was that things around you right this moment don't look good at all. 
If you look at Mary upon standing by the cross, Mary the mother of Jesus, Mary was distraught. Her son had been arrested and lashed several times. She, her son's body was full of wounds and blood was oozing all over his body. She has been grieved around the cross. She sees her son being abused. Let me speak to her mother. If you would see your son being abused by somebody, you will take whatever you had on, tear them apart to try and protect your son. But here was Mary, helpless, not knowing what to do. When you don't know what to do, we better seek one who knows what to do. And that is the man, Jesus Christ. When the things of this world are too much for you to bear, there is a Savior who is able to carry you through. When you walk through the fires, he will not walk alone. He is going to walk with you. We need to trust in Jesus. Mary saw his own son nailed to the cross. Saw his own son with the crown of thorns jammed upon his brow. Saw his son hanging between heaven and earth with a spear wound on his side. And we are told that uh, out of the spear wound on his side, there came a fountain filled with blood. When sinners plunge, they lose their guilty sin. She sees her son dying. And all she can do is stand helpless. Sometimes we are so helpless that we don't know what to do. Sometimes we swipe our cards at Walmart or Publix and it reads declined and we <laughs> say, nah, uh, I, I just used it. Please try one, one more time and they take that little plastic. You know what I'm talking about. They take the plastic and they try swiping and it says declined. And the next thing you do is look around if there's anybody you know. When you don't know what to do and you don't have a solution to your problems. Learn to lean on Jesus. Because my Jesus is able. If you turn to the book of John 1, 29, it says, The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This word, behold the Lamb of God, is the same word which is being used. I see that. It's the same word that is being used when it says, Behold thy mother. And Jesus says, If I be lifted up, I shall draw all unto myself. All these words are spoken in the book of John. The book of John is a very friendly book. The book of John is a very lovely book. And the book of John says, Behold thy mother. The song that says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And when the things of this earth will grow strangely dim, only look unto Jesus. All that Jesus was saying to his mother when he said, Behold your son, Jesus was saying, Behold me, I am thy son. Look unto me when you're helpless, you don't know what to do. Look unto me, we gotta look unto Jesus. When you don't know what to do, there is somebody who knows what to do, and that is Jesus. My question tonight is this. Can God count on you?